Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Untapped Podcast. My name is Jacob Gable. And my name is Jacob Bortz, guys. Welcome to episode 133 of the Untapped Podcast. If this is your first time joining us, first of all, thank you. We are thrilled to have you here with us. We've actually got five main formats of our show. So first, we have Forging Fortitude episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the mental side of our brand. So we go over our anecdotal experiences with things like mindset and mentality. We then pass on tips and advice to you guys to then apply to your own lives. Next, we have physical vitality episodes. Now, in these episodes, we cover the physical side of our brand. So we really get to showcase our expertise because you have two certified personal trainers here. So in these episodes, we cover everything to do with the gym, nutrition, workouts, uh, workout programs like 75 Hard, fitness in general, uh, supplements, untapped training, which is alive and well and actually going extremely well right now. Mm -hmm. So guys, if you are interested in any training, get a hold of us, okay? And then sometimes we will take trending topics or articles within the fitness industry and give our thoughts and opinions on those. Guys, those physical vitality episodes are full of free game, whether it's nutrition-based, fitness-based, gym-based, supplements, whatever it is, full of free games, so make sure you pay attention to those. Man, those physical vitality introductions always get me hype. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> Deliver me right into breaking yes. news. Just gives you a pump. Dude, just 100%. talking about it, you know. 100%, yeah. <laughs> um, guys, our third format is our breaking news format. That is a current event-based format. Now, keep in mind, we could do three to four episodes a week on the current events going on right now in the world, and especially the U.S., just because elections are coming up in November. But we don't want to make that our entire personality on this podcast. Current events are important to talk about because they relate to the world we are in and they affect everything going on in the world we're in. But we're not here to doom and gloom and only focus on current events and things going on. Now, our fourth format is our night's table format. It's a masculinity-based format. We have that for you today, actually. We talk about things like toxic masculinity, what it is, if it's real, fatherhood, the effect it's had on our lives how important males are in general, and the actions that, again, we've gleaned at our age that males should be taking. Now, keep in mind, I'm 26. Wurtz is 25, very close mm -hmm. to the 2'6". Mm -hmm. Mitchell, our producer, is 24. Because of that reason, we're not coming to you at the top of the mountain. The only perfect man to ever walk the earth is Jesus Christ. Now, on to our fifth format. That is our guest format. The guest format is when we sit down with an entrepreneur, fitness professional, athlete, doctor, somebody with a great story, pretty much anybody who brings you value. We learn a ton from those episodes. You will also learn a ton from those episodes as well. Our final thing to introduce is my brother and producer of the Untapped Podcast, Mitchell Gable. Hello. What's going on? Are you over there reading Missouri Conservation? Not at all. He does. <laughs> <laughs> that's cra that's a crazy pickup by you. I didn't even notice that until What's you the said cover? It. Yeah. The cover pictures are always yeah, good. Yeah. Yep. Shout them out. Shout them out. Yep. What, what is that? I don't know. It's like a basket of like berries or something. Dirty like vegetables that. or something. I I, they look like berries to me. Oh, that's honestly kind of perfect for Mitchell for you know intro to a night's table episode because conservation is like pretty masculine. Sure. You know what I mean. Sure. Honestly, is there anything interesting going on? Um, in the Missouri zebra mussels were discovered in the tenth. Uh, like most recently, <laughs> <laughs> zebra mussels. What? Yeah, they're an invasive species. <laughs> Why are you laughing? M now, 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 that's now, important. Now, specify animal. here: mussels, like the organism mussels, yes. or literal zebra M mussels. No, zebra mussels. M u s s e l, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You pretty, pretty impressive. You asked me if we that we knew that mussels oh, yeah. were an organism. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like no big deal. Yeah, these guys are zebra educated mussels here. found in Tenth Missouri Lake. Hey, that's important. That's an invasive species. Mm. There, there is way too many of those in the U.S. Actually, right now, conservation is actually a good topic, anyways. But it's just that we don't have all the education ourselves yeah, yeah. on it. You know what right. I mean? So, right. it's an important topic. There's no doubt about it. Right. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt can tell you all about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Let me hear you say it, dude. Let's go, Chiefs. Oh, come it's opening on. day, don't, baby. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Let's go, Harrison Butker. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. There it is. I like, like I said to you, I think Chiefs are going to win the bo the bowl. The SB this year, <laughs> for sure. Because um, I, I, yeah, I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> <laughs> the SB. Yeah, the SB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I think the Chiefs are going to win it as much as I almost vomit saying that sentence. Um, because I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see people beating Mahomes. The only person who really has ever beat him is Burrow. And that's about well, it. Well, and Brady. And Brady. Yeah, yeah. Actually, a good point. Um, so those are really the only two. And 
again, who knows if Burroughs team's back to form or anything like that. Yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, I, I think it'll be a good season, though, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You proud of me, though, being one of the few people that doesn't have a Mahomes or a Kelsey it, jersey? That's what I'm saying. Pacheco, I'll take all day. I like yes. the way he runs. Like, yes. I, that's one thing I can respect for sure. Runs hard. He's got a crazy yeah. story, too. That's true. I remember crazy you mentioned story. that to yeah. me. Yeah, when we were yeah. watching one of the – I think it might have been the Super Bowl or the conference final game. Yeah. The conference final. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, like you mentioned, we do have a night's table. I feel like it's been a while since we've done a night's table. A little episode. bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, when we when you have four main top um, main formats, formats, yeah. you know, and then guest, obviously, like sometimes it takes a while to get back to some of the other formats. But we do have a night's table, and we're going to talk all about anti fragility, mm. or as they would say in Christmas Story, fragili. <laughs> Must be Italian. Big Christmas story guy. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> and if you don't know, I don't know what you and your family watch on Christmas Day because it's on for 24 hours straight. <laughs> just, just a ton of Christmas movies yes. on. It's awesome, actually. Yes. But anyway, why don't you lead us in here? So anti-fragility. Um, concept I heard on not only just, um, what do you call it, X or Twitter. Um, and I also heard, just heard this in general on a few of the masculine podcasts I've talked or I've listened to. Um, I really enjoy listening to those as well as, you know, current event podcasts, other, you know, fitness podcasts. Sure. Those are like my top three. But, you know, this this is something I heard from those pod, the masculinity podcasts, and then also from X and Twitter, where it's basically the idea of having a certain strength when it comes to life's hardships and whatnot. Mm. And that could go for something, we'll talk about it later, as simple as, you know, somebody saying a, a mean word to you mm. and you tolerating it and handling it in a professional way. Well, we can um, just start there for that matter. I mean, we, we literally yeah. could, yeah. Um, and it could also go for, you know, you know, having the ability to be, again, that rock for your family that we talked about in past episodes and being that, again, the waves to crash into, so to speak, is the terminology a lot of um, a lot of these podcasters and in general, the masculine space you use is, um, is you're basically the ability for your future family and your friends, even if you're not married and whatnot, um, your kids, if you have kids and whatnot, you are that rock that holds up the family unit, mm -hmm. which again, we've gotten away from in this country. And, you know, that's where a lot of our problems stem from because right. fatherhood just isn't as honored as it is. The role of fathers isn't the same as it used to be when we were functioning as a country. So, right. or even yeah. when we were younger. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Know, or at least, at least from what we perceive. I was gonna say our perspective you know, is pretty good considering our fathers. Yeah, no doubt about yeah. it. You know, we've mentioned many, many times throughout the history of the podcast here that you know we were extremely fortunate to grow up in great households and continue to have that. You know, right. to continue to have two sets of great parents, um, and and that has absolutely formed us. You know, into the people we are now and continue to try and grow into. Um, and a lot of it too, and we've talked some about this, but a lot of it too, with these specific things stem from your relationship with God as well. You know, as we've started to talk about that a little bit more and, you know, we've mentioned as we start to get older here, we're both trying to figure that aspect out of our lives. You know, we, we grew up in church and whatnot. And, you know, when you're little, you just, it's what you do. You go to church on yep. Sundays and it's kind of a checklist item in a way. You know, but I think as you and I have really started to mature, we've realized how important that aspect is in your lives, whether it's to be the rock for those closest to you, your friends and your family, um, because God is our rock. You know what I mean? So if you can trust in Him to be your rock, then people will trust in you to be their rock. And it's just like a cool little circle that connects here. You know, and so mm -hmm. once you... I think once you start to realize that, start to build that relationship with God, it'll then transform and um, kind of manifest or manifest. Like, There's a yeah. word I'm looking for, but it'll transfer is probably the better word than transform transfer to your relationships with other mm -hmm. human beings, you know? And so I think you and I are starting to see that as well as we are trying to take that part of our lives into our own hands. Mm -hmm. You know, we both in which, we, we should have, I should have brought yours down because I don't have mine with me, but, you know, we both found this new Bible that was recommended to you first by one of our buddies, mm -hmm. and then you recommended it to me, but very cool um, new, new International Version Bible, you know, which is always said to kind of be the easiest one to understand. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, it's got the Q&A things on the, on the sides of all the readings and whatnot, so it, it helps break down what's being said in the Scriptures, 
to better understand it, you know, and a lot of that is based in the masculinity world, you know, and absolutely it is. And obviously plenty of other topics yeah. um, throughout the Bible. I think you've mentioned it, uh, whether it was just to me or on the podcast, like the Bible is probably the number one self-help book as well. Oh, you know by I mean? far. You that, know, that's why it's kind of hard for me anymore. Like it, it's kind of hard for me to sit and want to like, it's, I like reading other books for sure. For sure. But there's something about the Bible that is just, it's completely different than any of them. It is. And completely better than all of them, too. Absolutely. I mean, honestly. And and I think where where those self-help books, whether it's masculinity-based self-help books mm. or business self-help books or you know, mindset, where those still hold value is those can be easier to connect to because that's a real human being's story. Right. You know, yeah. the the Bible can be extremely difficult to understand at times. Yeah, because simple again, two thousand years ago, yeah, however exactly. long ago, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. As simple as the teachings might be and the readings might be, the language can be very hard to understand. So it's just like, what are the, what exactly am I supposed to get out of this? You know, which, like I mentioned, those those Q and A things on the side of the Bible we found um, helps with that. But I think where those types of books still hold value is because, like, okay, David Goggins, that's a real human being. Mm -hmm. I can well you, that is still alive too. That, that is still alive, a hundred percent. You know, we, we've talked about Andy and whatnot and whatever, whoever else doesn't matter. But you know, back to my original point, I think once you trust in God to be your rock, then other people will trust in you to be their rock, especially if it's rooted in that faith. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's absolutely biblical too. Yeah, I mean, because it, it, even the Bible talks about like the the uh, order. Of, or the hierarchy of how it goes is like God, man, and then family, right. or wife and wife and kids, so to right. speak, in that scenario. Right. You know, and it, the order goes that way because it works that really well. Hey, dude, you're gonna trigger the feminists with that one. Yeah, I mean, if we haven't done that by now, then, <laughs> then you know we've been missing on some points. Um, but you know, it's interesting because you see that order, and it's what you're talking about. Like, if you have God as your as your basically your stanchion or your base, mm -hmm. so to speak, and the man in man, so to speak, in front of you that God is. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you way more power as because if you try to take on life just by yourself as a man, <laughs> it's gonna beat the shit out of oh, you. Oh yeah. I mean, objectively, it's yeah. gonna beat the absolute hell out of you, right? By all accounts, and but having literally an all powerful being in front of you, backing mm -hmm. you up, right? I mean, that's that's undeniably right amazing, and right. I mean, it's it'll turn you into a better man because again, then. If you have that and you have that backing, so to speak, mm -hmm. you absolutely can protect your wife and kids, yes. can teach them great lessons, can pass good values down to them, mm -hmm. can have discernment when it comes to being a father at that point in time yeah. too, you know? And, and just a person yeah, in and, general. And, and, a, and a person, 100%, right. because even if you're, we're talking like single guys, you know, or unmarried guys in the case of us here, you know, it's like, you talk about those guys, okay, you have... God backing you up, then life's problems feel really easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like it's a bit, it's like the verse. You know, if if God is for us, who can be against us? Yeah, you know, it's right. like all time classic verse. Right. You know, where it it's just true because you literally have an, a rock in front of you. Right. You know, you're not without a rock. You know, it, a lot of the manosphere as we've talked about can be saturated with red pill stuff and whatnot, sure. which is a lot of the times very uh, secular and mm -hmm. away from faith and whatnot. Which it just doesn't work that way. Like sure. You can't you can't have it masculinity without faith and you know so it's saturated with that and they'll talk about it and it's like it's very lonely because it portrays you as having no backup essentially mm -hmm. yeah you have your friends yeah you have your brothers and whatnot all that type of stuff but it's not the same right. as having the all-powerful creator of the universe right in your corner which can be a very difficult thing to accept mm -hmm. and continue leaning on because all of us in today's world, as much as you want to deny it, all of us want things right now. Oh, yeah. We want things right now. I know that every day for me. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Yep. Me too. You know? And that's just not the reality of how things work. And so, especially with God, because he's got the plan. He He's guiding you on that plan, you know? And He is he's basically helping you every step of the way. But it's easy to lose sight of that and lose faith in the relationship because things might not be happening when you want them to happen, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's also, you know, that's certainly something I've struggled with. You know, here we are every day, or I shouldn't say, well, yeah, here we are every day wanting untapped to go like this, 
Mm-hmm. You know, and we are, just, we are just linear takeoff. Yeah, right, right. Moon. You know, F twenty two style vertical takeoff. I mean, literally, you know, yeah, that, like, or finding Michigan votes in the middle of the night. Oh wait, I wasn't supposed oh, wrong, to say wrong that. episode. Right, right, oh, right. Shoot, sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but but we want it to go straight up. Correct. You know, and yeah. we want to, and I think any business owner could agree with that too. For sure, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. And you know, we have we have these goals and these dreams of of freedom, financial freedom, and the good, the perfect relationship with God, the perfect relationship with a, a wife and the kids and all that. And we have these goals and these dreams, you know, and so we want to get to that right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to have those things right now. With God, that's not the way it works, you know? And so that's certainly something that I've struggled with, and I'm sure you would back me up on that as well. And it's also easy to see at times when the relationship with God lacks in your life Oh yeah, that sometimes you get led towards sin more, you know? And things slip that normally wouldn't. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow, I really do need that, you know? I, I took it for granted, and I really do need that. You know, and so it's faith is a hard thing, man. It's very hard. And then when you start to realize in a topic like this where you want to be the rock and you don't want to let minuscule little things get to you, you know, like the words or, um, you know, people coming at you or whatever, like it's very easy to take that type of stuff to heart. But again, it all comes back to if you have that strong relationship with God, you will realize it's like, okay, this is stupid. Like I'm, Mm-hmm. That's not actually hurting my feelings. That's just their opinion. And for whatever reason, they feel the need to take it out on me. But hey, like, I'm good. You know, brush it off the shoulder type thing. You know, so it's what I what I urge all of you guys listening to do is figure out where you are in your relationship with God and reach out if you need help because we're right there with you. You know, <laughs> yeah, we are right, right there. I mean, yeah. we, in the last probably... Three to four weeks, you and I have really started to talk a lot about it, you know, and then, and (laughs) I'm I'm getting goosebumps already here, but with what I'm about to say, but, you know, I see my sister down at Missouri State. Mm -hmm. She's a sophomore down there and she is heavily involved. I've talked about this in SALT and whatnot, which is, um, you know, like the youth group kind of down there and whatnot. And I can see her relationship with God blossoming. And so that is 100% influenced me from my little sister. You know, which is crazy to think about for me. Mm-hmm. It's just like, well, I'm supposed to be the older brother. Like, shouldn't I be influencing her? And and I sure hope that I have influenced her in ways. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know there are certain aspects where I absolutely have, but to have her influencing me kind of indirectly, it's like, man, I gotta get myself myself together. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta get my relationship with God because I see her doing so well down there. The people that are around her absolutely love her. You know, I, I think I said it on the last podcast uh, podcast episode, they threw this big surprise party for her birthday, and mm-hmm. you could see it was just, it was genuine love that they had for her, and it's like, man, that's so important to me. You know, I'm so proud of her, so excited for her. So when I see her turning to God and building that relationship with herself, it's like, that's that's what I needed to see. You know, I needed to see that because I need to take that way more seriously than what I have been in my life, mm-hmm. you know? And so that has stemmed you and I talking about it, and we've both felt in that same situation, you know, where it's like we have to take that way more seriously. Yep. It's not something to just check off the list. Okay, yeah, it, I prayed. It, right. I went to church. And we can, you know, it's you know, oh, I talked about it. I talked about him on the podcast. Yeah, right. Like you know what I mean? Like, yes. Like, like, oh, did my duty. Right. Yeah, right. It's that's the thing. It's like you and I are looking to go deeper. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. That's that's the actual goal with it mm-hmm. for sure. And that's hard to do because you know you think you have a busy schedule. I just want to sit on the couch and do nothing. I just want to go to you sleep. know when I have thirty minutes. Okay, let me just you know sit on the couch, do nothing, or go to sleep if it's nighttime, right. whatever. Right. You know, and it's important to still be diligent because you're right. That's all the things we just listed out and that you nailed a hundred percent here is like. That's the foundation and starting point for what we're about to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, anti fragility doesn't just come without faith. Right. There's no way. Again, that gives you that security that comes along with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's it's you talking about how, you know, letting words like if somebody says rude words to you or you know comes at you about your beliefs and certain things and whatnot, mm-hmm. and you know, having the ability to be calm about it, right? But also still, you know, eloquently deliver. 
you yeah. know, the speech back to them and, and still stand up. Yeah, you Correct. know, if someone's coming it's not at you about, for your it's beliefs. It's not about just like, oh, it's okay, right? You can you can also say your end of things too. Absolutely, because okay. if they're trying to get you to denounce your beliefs on on anything, whether it's God or or something else that you believe strongly in, you know, that doesn't mean you just brush that off. You know, that's no that's no small sin on their part. Exactly. I mean, honestly, exactly. Right. Trying to push you off your off the beautiful path you're on with right. faith again. The beliefs you have, they've been founded by your parents, by your friends, whatever whatever it is. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, it's it's such an interesting topic because I remember when I first saw it and listened to it and whatnot, it was it was such a simple idea, mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily easy to implement. You yeah. know, because you see especially on X. I mean, you scroll through there, you you see so many one crazy things, but also yeah. too, you see so many crazy opinions and whatnot. Sure. And you know, you'll see You'll see somebody quote tweet this tweet that was just, you know, some basically some dumb stuff right. that somebody was saying right. and whatnot. And somebody quote tweets and just roast them. It's like, yeah, like you get fired <laughs> up and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, do I need to get pulled into that too? Is that is that part of being anti fragile as well? Right. You know, about just getting pulled into every single tweet you see or something like that. And that's your whole personality. It's like, eh, is that a good use of your time? Right. And right. it's it's a fair question to ask yourself. And that's also exhausting. Absolutely. If you feel the need to get involved in yeah. every argument or every conversation or whatever, yeah. especially on social media, it's just like, mm-hmm. like, dude, you're gonna exhaust yourself. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, you're every comment section or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Um, I mean, again, somebody will leave a crazy comment in ours. It's happened a few times. It's like, right. And we'll we'll respond. We'll give them a good response, and we'll, right. we might roast them a little bit, but that's it. Right. And, and then they respond. We just don't respond after. Exactly. That. It's like one time we're done. Right. And then cool. Right. Good. You know and. This could even go to talking about the words. It's like even the lowest level of people that they tell, like if I told you, dude, I hate the Chiefs. Like they're they're so stupid. And then you got super mad at super me about that. Super upset. There are some people that do that though. <laughs> no, they're no, no, so no, fired absolutely. up about their college football team, their right. NHL team, their NFL team, their MLB team. It's like, bro, that is the last thing right. you should be fragile about. Like, listen. It's a sports team. Exactly. <laughs> root for your root for your team. Cool. Be passionate about it. Wear yeah. the jersey if you want. But to get crazy fired up, because I we both know people that are like that. It's just like, holy cow, dude. I mean, it was mostly just being funny. Yeah, I, you know I don't even want to have this conversation with me. No, like, like wow. I'm not doing this. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah, I don't like Alabama, but I know that they're the best football team in the country. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't like the Chiefs. I know they're the best NFL right, team. Right. You know, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, I do hate the yeah. Cubs, though. That's different, yeah. Entirely different. 100% Entirely. serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just dark. Right. <laughs> right. It's super mad right. about the Cubs. That's right. the one thing that gets you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so even even at the lowest level, like sports teams, because that's a good example for us yeah. dudes listening to the podcast, for, for sure. sure. And it, you, you can remember, for sure, from teenage years. I mean, I, I would tell, you know, like, I don't, I don't like your QB on your team or whatnot. Like, I, I don't, I think he's not great. I don't think he plays the game well. I don't think he has, you know, whatever. And you would think that you shot him through the heart. Yeah. No, literally. It's like, dude, calm down. <laughs> like this, this is not your identity. This is not like, that serious. No, it, not even <laughs> close. And, you know, you have to actually evaluate certain things like that too. You know, because if you're doing that about your sports teams, you're probably doing that about other stuff too. Other stuff that yeah. also is not that serious is is extremely inconsequential. Right. You know, somebody makes a like funny joke using racial whatever it is or something like that, and you freak out over it. Right. Like the Jaron Duran type thing. A hundred percent. Again, there there's an element of professionalism there in understanding. You got sure. cameras and mics everywhere. However, like he wasn't calling him that as a gay slur. No. Like, come on. He's Anybody just, in the right mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean literally. I, I mean, though. honestly, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it it's was. It's funny. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was hilarious. And, and the thing is, like, that's extremely fragile if that's, you, like, hang your hat and yes. freak out on that. Yes. It's it's just, a, it's a word. Right. I mean, seriously. And are we not going to talk, in that situation, are we not going to talk about the guy heckling the player, too, while exactly. he's trying to do his exactly. job? No, again, that's, that's always the thing, is that there's this abdicated responsibility mm-hmm. for everything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like... Well, um, you know, even even though in this war, this leader bombed bombed these civilians or something like that, but then this leader did this. It's like we're some. This is semantics. Right. It's 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 this. It's the same thing as you talk about. You know, 
yeah, the Europeans came in and wiped out the natives or something like that, but they don't tell you the natives were sacrificing human beings, beheading people in certain tribes and whatnot, scalping, scalping people. Yeah. And it's like, they just completely brush over that. They right. abdicate responsibility entirely right. for that community too. Right. It, it's that type of conversation, you right. know, and you, same thing as someone as small as the heckler. The heckler was an asshole. Yeah. He was objectively being a fag in yeah. that scenario. But like, also no like, doubt about it. Like yeah. even, even in his, like, it's still kind of funny in a way. Like it is. It's part. Yeah. It's part of sports. It's part of sports. Both, both things are part of sports. There. <laughs> yeah. That's just how it, it's yeah. hilarious. You know the every tennis racket. <laughs> that's it's pretty funny if you really think about it. And and you know every player in every league ever is thinking exactly what Durant oh, said. Oh, hundred percent. Like you know. Yeah. You know that someone would just love to go up and punch the fan that's heckling them. You know <laughs> you just shouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. But let's say that dude, you know, is an accountant. Yeah. How would he feel if Jaron Duran walked into the accounting firm and started saying, you suck at accounting? Like, you're probably not going to feel very good <laughs> about on, it, Come on, type, type. <laughs> Come on, get to it. You suck <laughs> at the numbers. <laughs> it's like, imagine you had that guy in your ear. It's like, that would calculator, be awful. Calculator, calculator. <laughs> you need a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, my gosh, that's really good. Oh, damn. <laughs> imagine Jaron Duran walking into an accounting office and doing that. That's crazy. Um, but I, objectively, that's actually a really great example. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. And again, also it, not to mention Darren Duran literally will get MVP votes this year. It, like he's had that good of a year. Yeah. That's unfortunately for him. There's a guy named Aaron judge and Bobby Wood jr. He's okay. Yeah, pretty they're, solid. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, so you go, you go from words and whatnot, you go from, you know, Simple stuff like that, because you know the simple stuff is the the found like that's like basic. Yeah, that you don't get offended by words. Right. Essentially, right. you know, I, like that's very basic masculinity right there. You know, because if you get offended by words, it's also like when somebody comes at your faith and whatnot, you're not going to respond. You're going to freak out and just go and huddle up. What is that going to do for right? Sh like showcasing your faith, yeah, and actually bringing people to Jesus in that in that scenario too. Right, right. you're gonna, you're going to cower. And that's an opportunity for you to do those things. Like you just said, bring people to Jesus, bring people yep. to faith, yep. to Christianity, whatever it might be. And again, this doesn't mean you don't call out stuff you find sure. wrong too, sure. but you you do it in, a, in the correct way. And on this note, actually, that's a great point by you that you don't call stuff out. Like there's also an element too that Christians need to stand up for what we know is right and Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. We've been, we've been pushed under the rug for over a hundred years now. Yes. Easily. Yes. Easily. Like, all this, you know, and again, we, we've said that it's kind of a below-the-line issue, which it is, but like abortion, like why are there Christians that are for it? Yeah. You know 100%. what I mean? Like that's not okay. 100%. You know, and getting involved in senseless, senseless wars, like even that, even that counts. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're like begging to slaughter Gazan civilians. Exactly. Not. It's like there's also Christians in Gaza. Right. If, if you didn't miss that part. Right, right. And in, in any, you know, when you've got, you know, illegal immigrants and whatnot running through streets and just raping people and killing people and, you know, just being disgusting human beings in open, you know, pooping on the side of the street. Like, I'm not saying that's like anti-Christianity, for example. However, but just... It's it's a civilized society. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. 100%. And, and, and Christianity built civilizations like that. And there is law and order. Exactly. And very fair law and order for that yes. matter too. Yes. That's again why we talk about it as right. that thing too. Right. Because again, if you if you have this revolution that some of the conservative side of Republicans have or whatnot, and it's not Christian, we're not going to have morals. Right. Because it doesn't change anything. Exactly. You know, we still have girls half naked everywhere. Mm -hmm. We still yeah. have men having no control of you know our sexual desires, which is very difficult as we talked about with men too. It was like you know you have all this stuff and you have no direction with any stuff like that, and then what does the society turn into? Mm -hmm. It crumbles. Yeah. 100%. And, you know, it, again, that's harsh truth. You know, some people think of us as a melting pot and whatnot and all this other stuff, but it's like there are also cultures that are the wrong culture. Right. Objectively. Yes. It leads to a bad civilization. 100%. Bad for women, bad for the lower classes, et cetera. Look at what's happening in, in Colorado. Absolutely. I mean, you're telling me that we should just allow that because we're the melting pot of the world? I'm not so sure about that. Yeah, one. that won't work. Stopping a bus on the middle of the highway in California, you know, illegal. I assume you heard about that. I heard about that, yeah. yeah. What do you think their plan was to do with all those kids on that bus? What do you think their plan you, was? You tell me. You think they were going to take them to school? 
Sure as hell we're going to take uh, them to school. Pretty sure those kids were headed straight for human trafficking. Correct. Because that's one of their, oh, right here, yeah. their dough makers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That and drugs. Correct. Ma- mainly. Correct. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, killing people. But You're right. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I All of this stems from having a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Continuing to build on that. Continuing to strengthen that. Yeah, I was kind of wondering what that sounded yeah. like there. <laughs> Um, hmm. continuing to build on it, strengthen it, and finding ways to do those things even better. You know, it's not just go to church, it's not just pray at night, but it's really, really, really trying to build that relationship stronger and stronger. Yep. You know, and those things absolutely go towards that. So don't neglect those, mm-hmm. you know, but if you want to be that rock for your friends and family and your future family, your current family, all that. You got to believe in God. You got to trust in Him to be your rock as well. Yeah. You know, again, it can be very difficult. We're not trying to make this sound easy. We are, we are, it took us to get to 26 to really start to realize how important it really is, you know, and, and not that we, you know, we're atheist or Satanist or anything like that. Yeah, of course. You know, that's not what I'm, no, no crazy like turnaround story. Correct. Correct. But we are just finally getting to the point in our lives where, we realize we have to do it for ourselves. You know, no longer are we just Absolutely. going to church with the family on Sundays. I still currently do, especially when I can. Sometimes I do go by myself, and that's fine too, you know. But mm-hmm. um, just we're at a point now that we have to do it, you know. We're not being sent to PSR. I don't know if you guys ever did PSR, but like I did. That's like, you know? that's a, what do you call it? It's basically religion school there if you go, you go to yep. public yeah, school yeah, yeah, of course. is essentially what it is. Yeah. Um, we we didn't go to it but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Um so we're just we're having to do it for ourselves now, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm sure plenty of you listening or watching like you guys are in that same boat as well. And um it's just it's so so important, mm-hmm. you know. Well, that'll build into the the real stuff. You know, we talked about the simple stuff, the right. words, you know, standing up for beliefs, that type of stuff. That's pretty simple stuff. Like right. that's stuff you can do as a single man. For sure. But there there's a difference between that stuff and, you know, if your family comes into a crisis, financial, whatever it health. is, health, yeah. et cetera, all yeah. that type of stuff, and being able to navigate them through that. Mm-hmm. I I saw I saw plenty of times my dad do that when we were younger. I saw plenty of times Steve do that. I mean, it was again, like without him there, that crisis would have wouldn't have been avoided. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was like, no, wow, you said I, it right. I thought I said that wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, so again, this is why you and I can also speak on it too, because we've seen it from our fathers. Mm. And we've seen this fatherhood and what it looks like and what it actually does for you. And yeah. again, we've sat and thought about that too, sure. as well, about the actual duties of a father and whatnot mm-hmm. and what in, is entailed by that. Yeah. You know, I mean, my, my dad, I, I look back on it. It's so funny because there were so many times where I thought he was just like lecturing me. <laughs> and in reality, he was just teaching me life lessons yeah. and talking about it. No, for sure. You know, me too. And I picked up on so many things like that. You and I both act like our dads. And, and I mean, big, big time. We both <laughs> also feel that way sometimes even still. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's like dad, stop we, lecturing me. We, but which again, I, you know, I'm sure whenever we're fathers, God, God willing. I mean, like, yeah, we're, we're going to want to be father in our whole life too. Right. Up until we're 85, 90, <laughs> right. et cetera. Like, I mean, right. yeah. So right. I, I I can't blame him. You right. know what I mean? I, I I get it. I really. But do. to your point, it's just like, okay, maybe he's really not. Like, what can I what can I right. learn? What is he trying to teach me here? Like, I probably should listen. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and especially for you teenagers listening. Oh yeah. Like we we know how hard the hormone time is right now. <laughs> yeah. We we both went through it. It's a mess. But yeah, your parents are usually right. Yeah. There are times when the parents are wrong. Yeah. But if you have good parents, they're usually right. Right. It, right. it is what it is. You know, and that's that's the real, real role of what we're talking about mm-hmm. all this. Because if you're anti-fragile in those scenarios, like the smaller with words, with your beliefs, et cetera, it then translates to when you are a father mm-hmm. or are you, and or husband mm-hmm. at that point in time. So it all translates to that because then, again, if your wife's having, uh, you know, stress when watching the kids or something like that or whatnot, you can back her up. Through yeah, that. right. It's like, again... Both of our parents stayed home situations. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad was like, "Honey, I'm going to go out, support and provide for our family, like, and I'll back us up. Mm-hmm. I'll handle this aspect. It will get handled. Financial aspect will be taken care of. It right. is what it is. Right. You know, and boom, 
Yeah. That's the that's the big role. Yeah. Because that's how you again, as we talked about, actually culturally change the country mm-hmm. is Christian households like that. Yeah. So right. yeah. Well, guys, that is episode 133. Now, at the end of most, if not all, of our non-guest episodes, Money Mitch, our wonderful producer, who was awfully quiet over there tonight, um, probably distracted by the berries on the cover of Missouri Conservation. Oh, yeah. yeah, Missouri Conservation is a huge thing and to the, get into. And the zebra yeah. mussels. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he will ask us a Q&A question that is submitted by you guys, the viewers, or the listeners. And there's a few different ways real quick here that we would like you to submit those. First and foremost, you can DM them to us on Instagram at untapped.llp. You can also DM them to us individually or text them to us if you have our numbers. You can email them to us. Our email is extrications at gmail.com. I know it's a mouthful. There's an email button in our Instagram bio. It's also on our Facebook bio. And you can also leave your questions in the comments of our Instagram posts. We usually post anywhere from one to two to a maximum of four to five clips a week from the podcast episode. Just quick little highlights from the episode. So you can leave them in the comments there or leave them in the comments on our YouTube videos. So all of these podcast episodes are also on YouTube. Mr. Gable here does a great job of getting those up on YouTube. We also have YouTube exclusive videos. So like last week, we did not have a full-length podcast episode, but we still had a YouTube exclusive. So guys, if you haven't gone and watched any of those, Definitely go back and listen to them. We also have vlogs on YouTube as well. Um, you can leave them in the comments on any of those videos. All of the questions then get get given. Get given. Get passed. Get passed yeah. on. Yes. yes. So get passed on to <laughs> Money Mitch. And uh, he will pick one out that pertains to the topic of the episode. Something funny. Sometimes he'll just come up with a question on his own because as much as we don't like to admit it, he is a pretty smart guy. Okay. There's you, no doubt. There's you no are doubt. a pretty smart guy there, Mitch. <laughs> the kid, He's also crazy sometimes. I, the, the camera won't pick that one up. Yeah, right. That's for sure. So, with all of that being said, <laughs> money, Mitch. Should women be pastors? <laughs> oh, oh, my wow. God. Wow. I thought, I thought you were going to... That's that one. I mean, that's that stirs some uh, controversy for sure, Mitch, but I thought you were going to say some crazy stuff. It's like... <laughs> Should should women only be in the kitchen or something like that? <laughs> I was waiting for something like that. I, I definitely thought he was going that direction as well. Yeah. Um, no. Correct. They should not. Correct. No. They shouldn't be priests. Which I think actually there are Catholic churches around the country that some of them do have female oh, priests. There too. are. Yeah. There's also like allied yep. churches. I don't know if those ones are specifically yep. Catholic or not. I, I just don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're certainly Christian mm-hmm. and they're allied with rainbow stuff everywhere awesome and a lot of those a lot of the ones that i have seen on social media have female pastors yep Hmm. Uh, it's but but what it is and that's that's a this is actually this question in general is an overarching problem in general is that churches now are led by women right which is why we're in the scenario we're in now because the men in the congregation men of the parish they stand back and are silent Mm -hmm. about things that are important right to a, you know, traditional masculinity, traditional Christian masculinity Ooh, that is actually touched on in the Bible, that is biblical evidence right. as well. You know, they're too afraid to push back against the female leaders mm-hmm. in the church, which is again why we're saying women shouldn't be pastors. That's the starting point right. because there's already plenty of. I mean, there's you know there there's stories that I've actually heard where you know the female leadership groups or whatever like that ran the female uh, Bible studies basically pushed out certain pastors at other churches mm. because they didn't like that they were saying, you know, it's a classic Mother's Day speech, but then Father's Day is like, did you do your duty today, man? <laughs> like that. And then the mother is like this perfect angel with no repercussion at all or anything like that. She can never do anything wrong, mm. which is very false. Um, you know, so it's an interesting conversation because there's way too much influence from the female side of things in the church. They're a very important and integral part of the church, but they do not lead the church. Right. Right. Again, f- feathers are getting ruffled for sure. Like, yeah. There's no doubt about but, it. That's a harsh truth, though. But it's, it's a fact of the matter. You it know? is. And, and we've we've even talked in the past as well that there are a lot of women that are in leadership positions just in general that should not be. That's not to say that no women could lead anything. That's not, that's not what we're saying. But, you know, there are certain... 
businesses or huge businesses that have female leadership and things go south real quick. Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light are a huge, perfect example That's of that. That's actually a phenomenal example. You know, yeah. where, you know, the, the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing is obviously what I'm referencing there, but that whole thing started from a female leader. From the VP of marketing, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah whatever yeah, yeah. she was. Whatever she was, and, yeah. And it's not it's not to say because I know now that's back to back things where I've said female leadership and then gay stuff like I really <laughs> oh <laughs> you know with the well, with well, the allied the churches connection and stuff. Is there, word, sir. But hey. correct. <laughs> but I'm not trying to say like if females are leading something, it's going to turn gay. Like that's not what I'm trying to say well, here. I mean, what, but I mean, it's more is, emotionally exactly. catered. You know exactly what you're saying. So yeah. when you have people outside of the church crying and begging to be let in. But because it's a Catholic church, they don't allow gays in or whatever, which I don't know how I, I didn't mean to say it like that. But <laughs> like they, they lock them out of the door. <laughs> exactly. That's not that's not how I intended that. Wow. You, you mean you mean like a Catholic church that isn't encouraging that type Correct. of behavior. Like, Correct. That's and that speaks on that behavior being right. incorrect. So yeah. then if there is a female leader mm -hmm. who is going to be more emotionally led, then you turn around and you've got an allied church. And it's yep. like, what is that? Correct. What is that? Yep. You know, so... And again, this is majority of the time. You know, I'm, I'm right. sure there are some male leaders that have been feminized and they oh, act for that sure. way too. No I'm doubt. I'm sure there is. There's no, no doubt. doubt. Yeah. But it, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, yeah. it's... And again, that is that is actually a really good quality in women is that they're more emotional, they're more sympathetic. For sure. That type of stuff, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They are they are more apt to be forgiving to a certain mm -hmm. degree too, you know, for sure, um, which is something I struggle with <laughs> a big time. But... Which is, you know, why it's why it's good that I'm with Holly. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, she's a very forgiving, loving person mm -hmm. and whatnot. But again, you know, that comes into play where that's not a leadership quality. You know, because it allows behaviors like that and starts, and then it, all of a sudden, it's encouraging mm -hmm. those behaviors in the church, right? Because it's different. Like they obviously can come in the door, they, right. Obvi right? Obviously, if they want to hear the message of God, a hundred percent. Everybody's right. a sinner. There's no doubt. Right. Homosexuality is a sin, just like you know, lying to somebody is a sin. Right. 100%. Right. No doubt. You know, but there's a difference with that would be like going up on the pulpit and encouraging sin. Exactly. That's that's essentially what allied churches do. Right. That is purposely encouraging that. Right. Where you have to take a stand and say, no, this is something we disagree with. Right. Bibli biblically based as well. Right. Just like what we're talking about with male pastors and male priests, that's biblically based. Mm -hmm. That is where that comes from. Men lead the church. Mm -hmm. That is very spoken about topic oftentimes in the Bible. Absolutely. You know, and again, the Bible is probably, if I'm correct, last time I checked, is the most well-preserved religious text in the world. Mm. Has the most cross-references back mm -hmm. to different pamphlets throughout, back to 800 AD mm -hmm. to 1500 AD, et cetera, et cetera, right. et cetera, all the way down the line. So it's a very accurate document as well. Right. You know, and again, I'm not going to get into all the accuracies of it because, you know, I know about them, but I'm also not a theologian, so I won't deliver them as well as a sure, theologian, sure. of course. But there are biblical truths. Again, homosexuality is a sin, just like adultery is a sin, mm -hmm. just like, um, excuse me, just like there should be male pastors and male priests. Mm -hmm. That is a biblical truth. Right. It's harsh, but a religion isn't a religion without standards. Right. You, you can't you can't just shift standards in a religion and expect it to maintain the same value. Right. That's that's again why Christians we've abdicated our responsibility and become apathetic in this country, right. because of things like that. We've allowed things like that to creep in because our society was so easy. It's like oh, we don't we don't need to worry about leadership. We don't we right. don't need to have the men leading everything and whatnot. Right. But, you know it it and it just cascades into where we are now. Mm -hmm. a, again, I mean. A lot of the downfall of this country can be traced back to 1970, where you know all the what do you call it, uh, sexual rights and you know etc. Et like the revolution, sexual revolution, sexual revolution, like exactly. Yeah. yeah, it can be traced back to that type of stuff. And again, that was female dominated and female led. Yeah, because again, it's like the love everybody, you know, be be super nice, etc. and all that stuff. But it's like that's why the men are leaders because they set the standards, right? And that goes for a church, just like it goes for the country <laughs> right you know right i mean honestly right it, so it ah, dude it's it's a harsh topic it really is like it, and it's it, you, you get it's kind of hard because we laugh and whatnot because it's a crazy topic to talk about but it's sure it's just true yeah right like 
just because the Overton window is shifted to talk about men and women being the same doesn't mean they are. Right. It just means that you, because of society, it portrays it in this way. They're not the same. Not the same. Right. I mean, women's basketball is a great example of that. But, you know, I won't take shots. Um, <laughs> Taking shots. Uh, <laughs> well, Angel Reese is missing, missing shots. Uh, and yet somehow broke and- the rebound record. <laughs> Because she missed five shots every time she was down on the other end of the court. But so, hey. hey, it's an easy way to rack up the rebound. <laughs> I mean, honestly, maybe you know that I mean? was her strategy. Just purposely, I don't know. Just give it to yourself. We could you know? be missing something. It could That's be your strategy. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough topic to talk about. But again, just because society says one thing doesn't mean you need to jump off the cliff with everybody else. Correct, and doesn't mean that's the way it should be. Correct. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mitch, you got anything to add to that? No, you good over there? Nothing. Quiet night for yeah, Mitch. Say, that's a good question. Wow. Good, an- wow. good answer to that, Mitch. What do you think? You you like female pastors? <laughs> Love them. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> our resident Biden voter. Yep. <laughs> you notice he's the only one with a cap on right now. So we're good. We're good. Though it does say Bass Pro Shops on it, so I'm just going with the conservation theme this evening. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I learned those berries. They weren't they, berries. They're parasimmons. <laughs> parasimmons. Oh. oh. We're learning I'm not even over sure here. if I know what that is. Uh, some kind of native berry oh. or some native fruit. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> so you got? I got to give your answer, Mitchell. Your I'm in agreement question? with the, what you guys said. I mean, it, it just it, biblically, there's a ton and tons of verses in Timothy and all that other stuff. How basically just the uh, gods ordained uh, men to teach over men in the church. Um, that doesn't mean women can't be in the church. Um, in Catholicism, you have nuns. Um, yeah. In not an am, you have uh, women. Uh, you know, women can teach children. You know, you see women in, mm-hmm. in uh, youth uh, youth church and kids mm-hmm. church and all the other yeah. stuff. So it doesn't mean you can't be you, a woman cannot be involved in the church. Correct. It just means that the role is different in church, Correct. and that's right. okay. No, I think that's actually a great point. It's, it's a great delivery there. of yeah. it too. Yeah. yeah, a lot smoother than us. Than yeah. Sure. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> all right. Well, that is episode 133. Guys, if you enjoyed this, if you learned something, which we know you did, okay, if we got you thinking about your faith, about your relationship with God, you know, one, reach out. If you if you want to know how we're trying to build that relationship on our own and you want you want some ideas and things like that, like by all means, reach out on that. You know, we are far from perfect in that area and we probably don't have a place to really be teaching it <laughs> for that matter, but we can definitely speak on our our experiences with but it. again who was one of god's top prophets paul used to be saul he killed christians so yeah. are we out of bounds right you know right no great mm-hmm. point there so guys any questions or any comments like reach out to us we would love to hear what you're thinking about and as always please continue sharing the show um share it to your instagram stories send it to your friends text it around um any little thing like that helps us grow helps us get our messages out to more and more people, whether that's listening, listening audience or viewing audience. Um, you know, we're just we're c- trying to continue to grow this and our training as much as possible um, to influence and impact as many as we can, you know, so and we need your help with that. So please continue sharing the show. And until next time, peace and love. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.